So close your eyes, draw your shoulders back and down and just activate a bit of your Ujjayi breathing and set up an intention for your practice today. It's always very nice just to stop for a few breaths, to be mindful about your present moment, why you're here, why you're on the mat, why you're doing yoga. Noticing where you hold the tension, inside or around your body. Can you release these particular areas and just breathe into them. Always keep your face soft, so a small smile on your face, a smile in your heart. Don't set up any expectations, just allow the practice, allow your body to take you to, to this beautiful, interesting, exciting journey. Bring both hands in front of your heart to the prayer position. Separate your palms. Now slowly, as slow as possible, bringing your palms together, breathing into your palms. See if you can slowly maybe touch the fingers, touch the base of the palm so you can feel. And that will be your reminder of what yoga truly is, the balance of body, body mind and the spirit. Namaste. Again, thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful yoga journey and uh, thank you for joining for this practice. So take two blocks. Again, it depends on uh, your body type and how you feel. Each block has uh, three different levels. So level one, level two, level three. So each one goes advanced. I would suggest that we start with level two and one block will continue, the other one. So here will be your chest, and on this block your head can relax. And we're gonna stay in the poses for usually longer than in any Hatha class. We're gonna stay for minimum three minutes or so. So for this, I take my phone, and I'm going to set up the timer, so which will be helping us to do the whole practice. Sorry for this inconvenience. Just a few minutes. Sorry, it's taking some time, so I'm going to do I have to reset everything. I'm so sorry for keeping you muted. So in the meanwhile, while we're doing this, you can come on the block. So make sure that the lower part will come to your brow line. This is where usually it's supposed to come. So the upper chest will be on the block and your head will be on the other block. So you will feel supported. For your arms, some of you can bring and grab your shoulders, maybe hold your shoulders above your head if that is comfortable. Or you can drop your arms aside and just 
let it stay here. And the most important part is try to relax, but you can also do maybe laughing a little bit in the lower back and try to let yourself just surrender to the gravity, to the body weight. Continue breathing normally. Again, remember to keep your face soft. And let the body to settle down. Let it go. The weight of your arms will start opening the upper chest, the pectoralis muscles. Let it go. Let it Be present. The interesting part, you will notice the sensations. First, when you start holding your pose, you'll feel the first layer of sensation. And those sensations are the signals, the messages of the body, showing us that there is some unbalance, the energy is not flowing. So, over time, when you want to hold and breathe, you will notice they will disappear and you will start feeling a deeper layer of sensations below. Just two more minutes staying in this pose. The longer we hold, the more we are able to work with fascia. Fascia needs a long holding asanas because it's connective tissue and it's much harder than any muscle tissue. That requires a bit of stress and persistent pressure.
Now from here, take a few deep breaths. So we're full moving. And start coming back to our senses, to the body, to the present moment. Slowly bringing both knees together with a little support with the arms, with the pelvis. And from here, just roll to one side. Remove the blocks. And try to fully extend your spine. And just lay down a little bit and experience the opening. Drop your shoulders, drop any tension, and just let it go. Take a deep breath in. Now slowly bring your both knees to the chest. Open your arms aside in shoulder width apart and drop your knees to one side of the mat. Both knees together. And again, there is no pushing, there is no pulling. You're just allowing your body to go in its own way. Again, remembering that Discomfort, pain, and sensation are the ways how our body, it's one of the ways our body is communicating with us. There are also other messages. Sometimes when you rest it, when you energize, when you feel active, you feel very happy. These are also the messages that everything goes right with the body, you know, in the right way. And just continue breathing. Deep breath, bring your both knees to the chest. And draw both knees to the other side of the mat.
here again, bring both knees down to the chest. Deep breath in. Bring the knees toward the chest, lift your legs up, and from here slowly roll up, coming to seated. Right. And from here we'll be coming into the a diamond shape also, and from here. Rock and roll from right to left. Walk your fingers forward and slowly drop your hand. What is very comfortable in this pose is to use the block. For some people, this is where they will be. For some people, they can bring the block on their, let's say, heels and drop the head down so they feel supported. There is not much rounding in the back, but there is a lot happening in the hips and the lower back. For some people, that can go even down, lower. And just again, make sure that you can stay in the pose without movement for at least three to four minutes. The reason why without movement is the young energy, which is heating and warm and sun phase energy, is moving through the muscles, but the yin energy is moving through connective tissue, bones, fascia. So if you do one single movement, it means you, you activate young energy because you need the muscles. When you're holding the pose in a static pose and you're relaxing the muscles, it's only yin energy becomes active and starts flowing through every single cell of your connective tissue. That is why it's important to be static and not move anything once you're in the pose. And slowly, slowly, keeping your head heavy, start moving out of the pose, keeping your eyes closed, 
drop your shoulders, relax and lift your neck and just feel for a few moments, stay Record experience here, here, listen. And again, as slow as possible, bring both knees together. Come on your knees. And we're coming into the melting heart position. So make sure that your hips will be on top of your knees. You walk your palms forward. You come on your forehead. For people with the stiff shoulders, they can open their palms wider than the mat. If it's still creating compression in the shoulders, we can interlace both elbows and move them here. But today we're going to do slightly different. So we're going to stretch one arm, and with another arm, we're going to hold the elbow and maybe turn with one cheek down. And allowing the chest to get heavier, the body get heavier. It has a very therapeutic effect on your spine because it creates an anti-gravity on your lower back. So the discs that can compress throughout the day from sitting at the desk, moving and doing all other things, now it's upside down. So the weight of the torso is allowing the discs to stretch to relax. And we try to relax, again, not moving. Moving with the arms and shoulders, we activate lots of acupuncture meridians. Lungs, heart, small intestines, big intestines, partially liver and kidneys may be balanced, but at the same time, gallbladder and spleen. You can continue staying in this pose if you want to experiment. You just lift your head and turn your head to the other side with another chip on the floor so that you will experience another deeper opening in the shoulders. From here, holding your cheek where it is, just stretch your opposite arm and with the other arm that is straight, grab your opposite elbow and just stay in here for the while. From here, you can slowly lift your head and turn to the other side.
This pose also creates a very good massage for the internal organs because your organs are now upside down, they're out of their usual position. And that creates a little bit more vacuum and uh, increasing the blood circulation within your internal cavity. Very good. Don't feel it slowly, slowly again. As slow as possible. Think as if you're moving in a movie, moving in slow motion movie when you sleep. Extend your chest, drop your head, and come to the child pose. And just a few, we're going to spend a few minutes here. If your hips are not touching your heels, please don't worry. If it's too much for your ankles, you can put a blanket. Or if your hips are not touching the heels, or your head doesn't touch the floor, please feel free to use the block. And again, just stay with the breath. Now, because your front chest is compressed by its weight and legs, the breath needs to travel, the breath needs to find space. And what it does, it opens and starts breathing through the back of the lungs. So, automatically, your back ribs and your spine, with the breath, they start moving. So your spine starts breathing and it has an amazing effect on your spine. So with each inhale, your, your spine will get longer. And with each exhale, your breathing will start shorter and shallow. Very good. Take a few breaths before we move out of the pose. Very good. And now from here, slowly, slowly, hands on the ground again, heavy head, rolling with vertebrae at a time, come to seated. And we're going to do a very deep chest opener and shoulder opener. So for this, you may need a blanket to put it under the shoulder or and maybe a pillow. I use the block. So I lay down on my tummy. My left palm will be under my left shoulder. My right arm, you can see from here, it's shoulder line 90 degrees according to the torso. I'm going to move my hips to the left side so my whole torso, let me just put it up on one so it doesn't just allow us to move. So if my hip still stays on the right side of the mat, I will be going into the gentle back bend, which is not our intention for today. Our intention is to go into the chest, into the shoulder, into the stretch of the pectoralis, the front chest muscles. So for some of you, this will be more than enough. It might be very tense and you're going to stay in here. It's very therapeutic for the shoulder. It's very therapeutic for the wrist and elbow as well. So the block is, or a pillow maybe, is helping you to remain your spine as one straight line and it gives a bit of sense of comfort. With the time, the more your body starts opening up, your hips and your lower back will start coming to the ground. So for more advanced practitioners, they can even bend both knees and go into the pretzel pose. This is how my students are calling them. And again, continue breathing. The most important is not collapsing the chest, but try to lengthen up and open it. And let's stay there. If you want to go even deeper, you can push against with your left palm against your right knee and create more length in the front body and opening in the chest and the shoulders. 
The twists are always very therapeutical because they stimulate internal organs, they stimulate the nervous system, they massage the spine, and everything is connected to the spine. People with scoliosis or back problems, please be careful. You must know if you can do and if you're allowed to do twists. People with scoliosis are not advised to do deep twists. So for someone who has a bit of scoliosis or posture misalignment, maybe it's not advisable to go into the full twist, but maybe slightly experiencing not the twisting but shoulder opening position. But it's a good combination. This particular pose is for opening the shoulder and the most important is the twisting effect of the spine. And again, don't forget about the breath. One more minute in here. Few more breaths before we start going. And slowly, slowly prepare to move out of the pose. For some people, that could be quite, quite tricky. Tricky. So before moving anywhere, just lay down and allow your spine to just come into your neutral anatomical. We work with connective tissue with bones, and sometimes bones and connective tissue needs to come into its neutral range. So just let it go. We're not in a hurry. So again, taking your time slowly as you can, on as it feels comfortable for you. Coming on the other shoulder, and again, make sure that you move your hips right in the middle. Oh, in the middle, in the midline of the mat, so your hips will be in line with your shoulders because we don't want to go deep into the back bend twisting, but we experience a lot of happening in the chest and the shoulders. And just staying here and staying there here with the breath. Again, you can stay in this pose, it will be modern enough, especially if you have a scoliosis or any posture alignment or herniated discs. Uh, maybe it's not the time to push more, harder, but the opposite may be staying neutral, but experiencing and going without twist, so much twisting in the spine, going into the chest, into the shoulder. Those who wants, because the body wants the body is opening, the body will want to go a little bit deeper. So with the time, the lower back, the buttocks will start coming down to the ground. And again, you can imagine what is happening with this deep twist. All internal organs are squeezed, and especially massaged by the diaphragm, by moving diaphragm. So the deeper and longer breaths are, the more effects you will achieve, the more detoxifying effects you will have on your body, on your organs. Take one deep, maybe not one, a few deep breaths before we start moving out of this asana. And again, slowly, whenever you feel ready, coming out of the pose, bringing your arms together. 
will be moving the block. And ideally, will be to bring your palms forward and uh, drop your forehead all on your palms and just lay down a little bit if you can. Focus on the full breathing. So breathe through the your abdominal cavity for your tummy. Keep your face soft and I want you to observe the breath. And see the places that your breath is reaching. How deep it can reach. The breath is not only happening in your lungs, in your trachea. The breath is happening much, much deeper. It's actually happening all over your body. The oxygen moves through trachea to lungs, and then through the alveolis, the oxygen moves through the red blood cells to every single cell in the body. And again, through the bloodstream, the carbon dioxide is moved to the lungs and then from lungs out. So feel that, become aware of how important it is to consciously take every breath deep. And at the same time, I want you to experience how the breath is moving your spine. So on inhale, the spine lengthens. Because if it's attached to the spine, it expands on exhale. Your spine gets smaller. So your spine is following the breath. Last one here. Again, slowly, slowly, place your hands under your shoulders and come to the child pose. So, release any tension or compression in your lower back. So again, your head can come down or the head can come on the block. It's up to you. Just a few breaths. To the last and and here, just move from right to left to comfort yourself. There we go. Release your spine. And again, as low as possible, we're slowly coming, we're coming into the sphinx pose. So laying down on the tummy. You're going to open your legs somewhere a bit wider than your mat. And you're going to grab your elbow. The most important here is not to sink into your shoulders and not to push away too much. So it's something neutral in between. Um, if you experience, if it's going to be too much for the lower back, you can always move your elbows a little bit forward and stay maybe in here because we're going to stay here for a while. Believe me, in a few minutes, your lower back will let you know how intensive it is. So make sure that you find your perfect angle. So you can hold the pose again without any movement. I'm going to start here and then later on the most important that you're, you're not breaking your neck, not up, not down. So the neck is a continuation of your spine. So I'm going to stay here for a few minutes allowing the body to adjust and settle down into the pose and then I'm going to show you in the more advanced position. Again, the most Another important hint in here is to keep your buttocks soft. The moment when it becomes more intensive for the lower back, we all have a tendency to stress our buttocks. So make sure your buttocks is soft, your face is soft, and you're just staying with the breath. Again, allowing the gravity to take your body down, to make your body So 
For some of you, again, if it goes intensive, you can always lower the angle in the lower back. For those for whom it's not very much intensive, you want to experience a little bit deeper, you can come more into the seal pose. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher this time. So I'm turning my fingertips out, and I'm gonna stay in. One more minute. Again, slowly, slowly, as you can, lower down. Bring your head down to release the tension in the lower back. You can bend the knees, heels facing up to the sky, and just drop your heels to one side to another side. And just let it go. And again, from here, as slow as possible. Moving into, we're coming into the half saddle pose. So first you can sit on the heels, just let it go. Variation one for those who can go into the saddle pose. You're gonna sit, let's say, first let's bend the left knee. The heel will be as out of your buttocks. So make sure that both sitting bones are on the ground. Again, if it's too much for your knee and you cannot sit on the floor, please feel free to use one block or two blocks. Because if you're sitting on the block, maybe today your variation of the pose will be here. Because you feel a lot of stretch happening in here. The tight quads and most of the bone will affect the your knee so make sure that knee feels comfortable but a lot of stretching is happening in the front thigh so for some people this will be here maybe on the elbows again even if you're on the floor you can still come on the elbows but again the compression is not in the knee compression is not in the lower back because we're targeted to opening the front of the thighs so this is variation two and variation three for more advanced people you can come all the way on the floor maybe extend your arms maybe grab your elbows maybe stay in here that will be more than enough again make sure that your knee is left knee is very comfortable so you don't feel any pain or sharp pain in there if there is any sharp pain back up Maybe come to variation one and stay there, working on stretching the front of the thighs. For more advanced practitioners, you can maybe bring that upper knee toward your chest as close as you can. The lower knee may lift a little bit. That's totally fine, as far as you feel the stretch in the front of the thigh. In variation, another more advanced variation, you can drop the knee outside. And again, staying here. Dropping the knee outside is not only stretching the front of the thigh, but it also does a lot of stretch in your hip flexors, and you feel a different stretch in your lower abdominal muscles as well. So, the other knee may not be on the ground, so you can support it again with the block. It feels comfortable and I love to grab the elbows here so the opening in the chest and shoulders is still happening but at the same time my lower body is more than my lower body so it does a lot of stretching and lots of opening is happening there. Again the most important you keep your smile, you keep your face soft and you just breathe. 
One more thing that might be uncomfortable that I forgot to mention, most of the people, the ankles may not allow. Maybe your knees aligned, but your ankle is so steep. What you can do, you can roll the towel or blanket and just put the tent, uh, a small roll of uh, towel or blanket under your ankle so it will be more supporting and more comfortable. Just let's stay one more minute in here before we move and change to the other side. In my practice, I always start with one pose, then body opens up and I understand my body asking to go a little bit deeper. So I do a little bit of movements and adjustments and in order to get more deeper into the pose. In, bring the right knee toward your chest. You can roll up to one side, release the leg, and come to seated. Now you know where we're going, so we will be doing the other side. So you're going to bend the other leg down. Again, heel will be next to the buttock. Again, make sure that both sitting bones are on the ground. If they're not, use a towel, use a blanket, use a block. So again, either variation one, staying in here, maybe staying on the block, or maybe even staying by the wall, feeling supported will be more than enough as well. Variation two, you're covering your elbows and you're holding in here. Again, breathing, you can maybe put the block behind your head so your head feels supported. And you make sure that nothing is happening in you. The knee is not very much. There's a bit of stress, but it's not very, very painful and sharp pain. And where you should free for more advanced practitioners, it's either you're here, maybe the knee will come toward the chest, so you'll be staying in this pose. Or if you feel all right and you want to go a little bit more deeper, you can come into with the knee to the side and stay in here. And keep it soft, keep it smart. Most of the time, both legs and both sides are very, very different. One is more, might be more intense than the other one, so just. Before it feel an experience and let it be. Allow the gravity and body weight to do its magic. Again, remember about those sensations, the ways of communication between the body and you. Just try to observe and understand what is your body trying to tell you. Again, slowly, slowly coming to one side. And again, rolling all the way up to sit here. From here, we're going to go into a very deep hip opener. So it will be a wide angle pose. But we're going to do it with the twist first. So First, with the opposite arm toy, again, just a few hints. Your feet are not falling down, not away or not in. Your toes, kneecaps and top of the thighs are always facing up. 
So with the opposite arm, you're grabbing the opposite outer thigh. The other hand can be pressing against the floor if the palm is not touching the floor. Um, if your torso is longer than your arms, you can use the block. Or you can go into the full twist and maybe grab the opposite thigh and stay in here. So your hands will be supporting your legs. You're trying to relax your legs. You're lengthening for the crown of the head and you're staying here without movement. Deep breath in. And slowly move to the center. You can keep your eyes closed, just experience the opening. The effects of the asana. So let the spine to settle down before we move into the opposite direction. And from here, in slow and slowly again, no rushing. You're coming into the opposite side. Let your breath be natural. Deep breath in, exhale, release, bring down to the center slowly, take a few deep breaths, relax your shoulders down and back, now bring the bottoms together, and we will be coming into the high is sleeping dragon, or a lunge pose. 
So I would suggest you maybe use a towel or something like that in the middle. And you're going to bring one leg forward. And we're going to, I'm going to grab your elbows behind. We're going to stay in here. Pull it too much, and you feel that you need a bit of support. You can also back up a little bit. The most important is not to stay here because nothing is happening, it's to move your hips forward. Maybe you can stay in here, but pressing again and dropping your weight, your arms, or your sacrum. Move it also on and on because you feel it was stretching in the front thigh, and at the same time, there will be a lot of opening, good opening happening in the front of shoulders. If you feel that you can go all the way down. As low as you can. That will be very nice as well. One more minute in here. This is where a lot of interesting turmoils and challenges, mental challenges, as that coming to the surface. Your mind starts screaming, you start having dialogue inside that you want to get out, you want to quit. That is totally normal and totally human. So just be quiet and try to observe a few more breaths in. And slowly drop your arms down. Come to the child pose if you need to. Let's all come to the child pose just to relax a little bit. Oh, feels very good to feel all body parts connected. Few breaths. Not for too long, because we need to do the other side, right? So again, slowly roll the way up. You can place the knee, the pillow, or anything that you need to support under your left knee. Step your right foot, big, big step forward. So either you're staying again right here, or you place your both hands on your sacrum. Again, you can stay in here. That will be more than enough. Or if you can go all the way down. Again, either here or you grab your elbows. Then you stay in here. Soft inside. Let's stay for one more minute in here. Take last five deep breaths. Last five. Four. Three. Two. And one. 
and slowly moving it out of the pose. And when you heal, you move the cover. Gently come to the child position. Let it go. It's a juicy side. Um, very good. And slowly going all the way up, come to sitting, and again with wide legs open. This time, if you need, and if your hamstrings are tight, and let's say you're collapsing in the lower back, like you're falling backward, maybe it will be advisable if you bend your knees and you put something in your knees, like a cloth, a towel, or something, at least under one knee. So this way, we're gonna turn our torso toward the right leg. We're going to walk our hands. So either you're staying in here, there is no need to go all the way down and touch with your head and knee because you already start feeling a very good stretch and something interesting happening around your left buttocks area, lower waist and uh, lower ribs area. So maybe you'll stay, you'll start here. Again, make sure that you're Feet are not falling out, your toes, your knees and front thighs are facing out. So this is variation one. Variation two, maybe you can support yourself with both elbows on the knee and staying in here. Trying to relax and uh, not moving and doing anything. Or you can come maybe with both elbows down. Or you can come all the way down. Important that your left sitting bone is pressing and it's on the floor. And you're staying here for, let's say, two to three minutes. Again, we don't push, we don't pull, we just stay here with the back, with the body, with the ground. Again, take a few more breaths in here before we move out. And slowly, slowly moving to the center. Again, keep your eyes closed, let your head be heavy and move up as the last one. Take a deep breath in and ah, let it go. And now we're going to turn to the opposite side. So we're going to turn toward the left leg. And again, move as it feels. Both sides will be two very different. Everyone has different both sides. So variation one here. Same with the spine, but again, working on the lower, opening on your outer quads. Not quads, outer glutes and also lower back, lower waistline, and lower ribs. Variation two, maybe staying with on the knees, with both elbows on the knee. Variation three, maybe with both elbows down. And variation four, you can go all the way down. And again, make sure that your right sitting bone, not like you want, the right sitting bone is on the ground, on the floor.
few deep breaths and feel the belly to rise. Inhale, exhale, five. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, three. Two. And one. And again, slowly, slowly on the top to the center. From here, the last pose for today will be either you coming forward with the stick spine and you stay in here. Again, as I mentioned, because your hamstrings are very tight and because we need to bring the pelvis around the hip, the head of the femur bone, you can bend the knees and you place blocks under your knees and then move forward. This will allow you more space to move. For me, I'm totally fine here. I'm going to come on the elbows. Again, this is where the block becomes very handy. It gives a bit of some more support. So I'm just staying a little bit in here and make sure that your feet are not falling out or in. So toes, knees, again, I repeat, and upper thighs are facing all the way up to the sky. And then slowly your body starts opening and you start going lower and lower and lower. Think of yourself like a water. So with each breath, it moves down, it moves closer to the floor. Body opens, you start going by centimeter, sense by centimeter down, down, and over. In India, we're in any yoga, there is no, we're not targeting to the result, we're focusing on the process. So it's not important here if you come and you touch the floor with your forehead. Most of we're targeting, we're trying to keep the front body longer, going with the lower abdominal down. So again, we're not pushing, we're not pulling, we're just allowing the body to open within its own wisdom, within its own limits. Very, very good. Slowly come all the way up. Like you know, not seated. Again, keep your eyes closed. Just relax and feel to bring your both legs together. Grab under your knees and bring your both legs together. Hug them in. And for here, you have an option either to lay down for Shavasana, which will feel very nice, or can continue with the meditation and enjoy Shavasana after meditation. So both palms down, spine straight, curl your shoulders back and down. And relax. Again, remind yourself the intention of your practice today and why you're doing yoga. I want you to focus on your lower abdominal, which is our first dantian, first energy center. Is focusing on the physical body and the breath. So keeping your mind there, observe the sensations of your body, of your physical body, where the tightness, where the discomfort, where 
places that you feel nice or places that you don't feel. How is your breathing? Can you connect with the areas that you don't feel within the body? And send your breath into those places. Now focus on your heart area. This is your second density and second energy center, which is the one responsible for the emotions, for the feelings. Look inside your heart. Look within yourself. What do you feel right now? What do you carry inside your heart? What emotion or feeling you are experiencing? right now. attention to the third eye area, the third dentian, third energy center which is responsible for the mental activities. Look at the behavior of your mind, at the quality of your thoughts. Are they faster? Are they slower? Are they far away than they used to be? Do you feel calmer and quieter within your head? Are there less mental activities? Just observe without any judgment. Now can you feel those three power centers at the same time? Physical body, your emotional feelings, your mental, can you experience them balanced and united at the same time? How does it make you feel? Next, inhale, bring both palms again as low as possible. Don't rush to touch your fingers, bring them as low as possible and feel what is happening between your palms. You may feel a vibration under the skin, you may feel tingling sensations, you may feel some density in the air. It's your own experience, just feel it. as low as possible. Once you touch your fingertips, keep your palms as still open, like as if you're holding the sacred fire. Walk your spirit. The burning fire that shines through and shares the light of wisdom with the whole world. Smile to that beautiful light within your heart. On you say, bow to your heart. Offer your mind as a servant to the heart, to your spirit. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this session with me.
please let me know how you feel. And if you feel like going for Shavasana now, you are more free to do so. Thank you, and I hope I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.